there are seven things that are killing your prayer life and it's unfortunate many believers don't know because they think you can just rise up to become a man or woman of prayer you don't just open your eyes and end up to become a man of prayer prayer is hard work and there are so many believers who have killed their prayer lives without knowing of course there is a bit where the devil does his best to make sure that you don't pray yeah but we got to understand that there are seven bad practices that we do that kills our prayer lives without knowing apostle paul tells us in first corinthians chapter 9 you can open your bible to the verse 24 he says know ye not that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that ye may obtain and every man that striveth for mastery is temperate the word temperate is disciplined or balanced or sober or self-controlled he is disciplined in how many things in all things now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown but we are incorruptible i therefore so run not as uncertainly so fight i not as one that beat the air but i keep my body and bring it into subjection lest that by any means when i've preached to others i myself be a castaway now we need to understand that there are seven major killers of prayer lives in the lives of people but all these seven things that kill prayer lives are grouped under one root called indiscipline so indiscipline is the major root of all the killers of the life of prayer and quickly um, we want to look at the first thing that kills your prayer life number one is overeating in philippians 3 the bible tells us of a group of people whose belly is their god ladies and gentlemen if your belly is your god you will never become a man of prayer if you're a believer who loves food you will never become a man of prayer overeating has killed many prayer lives and most of the time you are all, always looking at the spiritual the spiritual what is causing it is it an attack from the enemy bro it's your tummy we find believers who eat three balls of kinky at 11 p.m and they expect the holy ghost to wake them at 2 a.m to to do warfare that, that can happen if you know you are a heavy eater make sure you eat very heavily in the day in the night if you want to wake up at dawn don't eat take tea or drink water and sleep so overeating falls under the discipline of diet so if you want to be a man of prayer you must discipline your diet number two is oversleeping laziness and procrastination is the second killer of many prayer lives unfortunately many believers don't know that extra sleep was an extra time for prayer there are many believers who know they have to wake up to pray but just because of laziness they decide to stay in bed or decide not to pray the bible tells us that while men slept the enemy came to sow tears amongst the wheat sleeping and oversleeping is not good for you at least between five to six hours is enough sleep for you if you oversleep beyond that you will kill your prayer life so that also falls under the discipline of sleep so you got to discipline your sleep set an alarm with vibration that will kick you and put you up there are sometimes you are dozing when you are praying you got to go and wash your face you don't always say ah, it's because of my body my body is not responding let it respond paul says i bring it under subjection so you got to bring your body under subjection you brush your teeth you go outside there was a time i was praying at dawn i was feeling extremely sleepy i had to kneel in stone so i could be able to pray through the night because this thing is work number three is worry and worry depression fear sin consciousness and condemnation is under one you know many many believers think that the more sorrowful you are the less prayerful you should become actually it's the opposite in james chapter 5 the verse 13 he says which one of you is afflicted he says let him pray he didn't say let him cry in luke chapter 22 the verse 44 the bible tells us of jesus being in agony the bible says he prayed even more earnestly so the more the agony the more earnest your prayer should be but many don't have that intelligence in romans chapter 8 the verse 1 the bible says for now and therefore there is no condemnation to them that are in christ jesus so you can never allow condemnation where the devil begins to whisper in your mind that because of a sin you committed so god is not hearing your prayer that is a lie and this has killed the lives of many people when it comes to prayer fear sin consciousness worry the bible says which one of you by worrying can add a single cubit to your height 
That means you are doing yourself great harm when you allow worry over financial problems, marital problems. If you allow those worries to take over your life, you will never be able to pray. And guess what? By worrying, you don't add anything to your life. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in all things. Other verses says, In everything by prayer. In everything by prayer. In other words, God expects us to pray about everything. God wants to hear everything. Even the things you don't think is, is most important, God wants to hear it. Number four. So that is discipline in emotions. So you got to discipline your emotions if you want to become a man of prayer. There are times you will not be happy. You will not always be happy. There are times my soul is grieved, depressed. But you got to be in prayer. So you discipline your emotions despite the financial struggle you are going through. And pray. Because that is your life. Prayer is your life. And the devil is going to press many buttons to kill that prayer life. He's going to use worry and sin consciousness like I said. Number four is poor feeding of the soul. It is another killer of many prayer lives. Poor feeding of the soul. There is no rich nutrients of the word of God in your life. You have never bought any book on prayer, yet you want to be a man of prayer. That's a lie. How many audios or videos have you watched on prayer the past week since you want to be a man of prayer? I have bought close to 300 books only on prayer. Because I wanted to master this art. I put this stomach down because I want to learn this thing. Because this was what contributed to the success of every man right from Bible days and in our time today. It was prayer. If you feed your soul poorly with the word of God, you can never rise to be a man or woman of prayer. How many scriptures about prayer have you read in the Bible? Have you gone through the New Testament right now? Google has helped us. Just type scriptures on prayer. Everything will be given to you. You just print it, paste it in your room. There are quotes of men of God. I have them in my diary. I have to go through anytime laziness begins to creep with this ugly head. I, be, I begin to look at what uh, the, uh, um, Samuel Chadwick has said about prayer. What John Hyde has said about prayer. The moment I look at it, I bounce back and I'm encouraged. If you feed your soul poorly, you will be poor in prayer. The riches of revelation you have in your spirit about prayer is going to ginger your life for prayer so poor feeding of the soul has led to many prayerless lives today we have in the church so we call that a discipline of the soul you got to discipline your soul your soul has got to do with your mind your will and your emotion discipline your mind feed it with the word of god number five sin and lust is the next killer of prayer lives you can call that the corruption of the soul david Ravin hill said a sinning man will stop praying and a praying man will stop sinning prayer will keep you from praying or sin will keep you from praying you can imagine what pornography can do to your prayer life what immorality can do to your prayer life it can cripple you praise god and many have been crippled because of the kind of things they've been watching so they can't see god when they are praying their mind is corrupted you got to you many don't know that what you view affects you especially in your prayer life but that's for another time so that's what we call the discipline of purity Ladies and gentlemen, in as much as Jesus Christ has died for our sins, past, present, future, we've got to understand that purity is a weapon. No matter the revelation you have about Christ, if you are living in known sin, you will never be comfortable. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost dwells in you. Number six, wrong relationships. I call that bad atmosphere. It has killed many prayer lives. If your friends are gossips, you will end up as one. If you are around prayer weaklings, you will end up a prayer weakling. If you are around immoral friends, guess what? Something will happen to you. You'll be corrupted. Your prayer life will be corrupted. If you are around praying people, it will influence you. If you are not around praying people, it will influence you. There are some of you got to cut some relationships from your life. It can be friends. It can even be a boy or a girlfriend. So you got to cut some relationships. That is taking your time. That is influencing you wrongly. There are some roommates you got to cut them off. Because ever since you got close to them, something is happening to your prayer life. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 2, the verse 7 and 8. You'll be shocked what the Bible tells us. I want to read that. 2 Peter chapter 2, the verse 7 and 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. This man was righteous but unfortunately by what he was seeing and what he was hearing it corrupted and vexed his soul 
because of the atmosphere the relationship he had with Sodom affected him so we got a discipline of relationship you'll be shocked the Bible says in 1st Corinthians chapter 5 the verse 11 he says but now I've written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one he says do not even eat with him this is an instruction you know why because you can easily be corrupted and that can affect your prayer life number seven excessive uncontrolled pleasure can kill your prayer life simply and easily as every morning chilling every time with your phone watching entertainment instagram facebook you are you are always entertaining yourself continue live band program every time you're there Amachi the day is here you are going there you're, you're just going to affect your prayer life we call that discipline in appetite and pleasures you got to discipline and control it